This is News 3 Now at 5. And thanks for staying with us. Right now, a portion of downtown Madison is closed due to another round of protests. Here's a live look at Gorham Street near James Madison Park. Police say the road has been shut down since 315 as a result of the protests. And that is where we find our Adam Duxter, who has the latest on the gathering. Adam? Yeah, Susan, for the second time this week, we've seen the Cupid Shuffle break out at a protest here in Madison. But despite that, today's protest definitely has the more of a vibe of a, a celebration. In fact, organizers calling it a celebration of life to honor Breonna Taylor on the day that would have been her 27th birthday. Now, today's event at James Madison Park is open for everyone and has a bit of food, a bit of music and dancing, as you saw, but also includes spaces to register to vote as well as artwork. It would have been Brianna's 27th birthday today, but she was murdered by police in her home as she slept. So we're out here to celebrate her life and to say celebrate us, celebrate black people, follow our leadership. <laughs> Now, just because today's event is the last in a week of events where we've seen caravans and shutting down the belt line, as well as John Nolan, uh, the leaders of today's event say they don't want things to end here, meaning the folks who have come out in support, they want them to continue coming out and to continue supporting the youth-led protests that we've seen at the Capitol Square each night. We'll have more from James Madison Park tonight on News 3 Now at 6, as well as tonight's planned protests from the Capitol Square tonight at 10. We will see you then. Thank you, Adam. Madison police say no arrests were made after last night's protests. In the previous two nights, the only arrests that were made were for graffiti. The department released records showing 38 arrests had been made since protests started. 26 of those were for curfew violations or resisting officers. Arrest logs show 19 of them came Sunday night into Monday morning. 13 came Monday night into Tuesday morning. The Monona police chief is sharing his thoughts on the body camera footage of an incident that angered a lot of people in the midst of everything that's happening around the country. Well, that video showed a black man being handcuffed in the home he was renting after police received a tip about a suspicious person. Jamie Perez spoke to him today, along with the city administrator, about what types of things they are changing to make a difference in the future. Jamie? The police chief acknowledged that what was seen in that body cam footage shocked him, but it also brings forward a really important issue that needs to be addressed now. Someone called because they... I know, because I'm a black man and it's that lady right so, there, even though she waved at me. Monona Police Chief Walter Ostranga acknowledged this incident was not a good look in the midst of everything that's been happening in our country right now. How would you have handled that differently? Well, that's a tough question. If I could go back right now and if I had my powers to change things, um, I would say we have to start with the phone call and maybe it ends up we don't even respond to that. Can we do that? You know, that that's touchy. I mean, that's the way it's taught in the academy. A textbook entry of what they did with their weapons out and detaining someone. But maybe it's time the book gets changed. City Administrator Brian Gatto said he and many others feel the same. It puts a, a sharp focus for us on the conversations that we need to have as a community. Many of the city leaders who are predominantly white are taking the lead by organizing ongoing racial bias conversations that they say are long overdue. They're hoping this can change the community for the better, but also help them get a more diverse representation in leadership roles too. Self-examination and self-reflection upon ourselves and the way that we operate as a city but also provide a space for members of the community to, to have that conversation and, and have a dialogue. And that's just the first step for them. And they acknowledge that until they can get through the discomfort these conversations could bring for a lot of people, it's a step they say they need to take. As a white man in a leadership position, are you prepared to face what could make you very uncomfortable? I'm already uncomfortable. From what happened the other day, it has not been comfortable at all. So if we can communicate with people and talk about what happened, I think that can be nothing but improve my comfort level and improve my knowledge and improve my compassion and improve my empathy for what people are going through. 
There will be a virtual town hall meeting held tonight by some Monona residents to start the conversation about those racial biases. And then tomorrow they're going to do a peaceful walk through downtown again, hosted by some Monona residents where city officials are said to be also participating in that walk. And then for more details on when this racial bias conversation, this ongoing conversation will happen, please stay in contact with the city. They're going to post details on their website as to when and where that will be happening. Now we'll try to relay that as well to our viewers. Jamie Perez live tonight. Jamie, thank you. Protesters are reigniting the debate over having school resource officers in Madison schools. Our Amy Reed is live now to explain how likely it is that the district will take them away. Amy? The way the contract between Madison schools and the police department is written, there are opportunities to reduce the police presence in Madison schools. The next chance for that would be June 10th, five days from now. However, however, there's only one public session of the school board between then and now. The board president and a representative of the district also told us today there is not interest from the high schools in removing SROs at this time. Still, it was a close vote, four to three, in allowing the contract to go through in the first place, and some school board members would still like to see the issue revisited. We have to be against something like that. It's not an option to be for um, subjecting African-American students to incarceration far more frequently than anyone else for the same sorts of things that kids of all identities are participating in. Board President Gloria Reyes reiterated to me today that she's not in favor of breaking that contract. She said if there is an incident, police will get called to the school regardless. And she said the SRO relationship allows for the district to have more control over how the officers police their kids. Now, if there isn't a decision before the 10th, the school board or the police department could come back this fall but and correct that, but it wouldn't be effective until the following school year. All right, Amy, thank you. The city of Minneapolis has voted on the first changes to its policing policies in the wake of George Floyd's death. Minneapolis agreed today to ban chokeholds by police and to require officers to try to stop any other officers they see using improper force. They're the first concrete steps to remake the city's police department since Floyd's death. City Council approved that agreement unanimously. Madison 365 is hosting a day of conversations in their Real Talk Racial Justice Summit today. Leaders have been answering questions all day about changes that can be made to answer to protesters. Our Amanda Quintana is joining us now with the details. Amanda? This was really a day of conversations with people who can help make big changes, starting by talking to elected officials, then corporate leaders and criminal justice leaders like a Dane County judge and former police chief. Some of the protesters' demands include defunding the police department and giving the community oversight over police. State Representative Sheila Stubbs says elected officials need to include community leaders in their budget process and answer their questions about how much money is going to police. Me with my personal racial profile incident, I know it's real, but the change happens when your elected officials are held accountable and they write the policy. It is policies that are systemic that have brought on the racism. And until we disrupt, dismantle, hold people accountable and revisit our budgets, we will not have change. And our youth have demanded change and we have to answer the call. Representative Stubbs says she's trying to collect details on the defunding happening to the Los Angeles P P Police Department to see what that might look like. The conversations just ended at 5 o'clock, wrapping up the day by talking to community organizations like Urban League of Greater Madison and the African American Council of Churches. Even though they were streamed live, all of these panels are available to watch still on Facebook and on YouTube. Amanda, thank you. The Washington, D.C. mayor has urged President Trump to withdraw the military and extra federal law enforcement presence in the city. But in a Rose, Card a Rose Garden press conference today, President Trump defended his response. He's also calling on states like New York and New Jersey to deploy their National Guards. You have to dominate the streets. You can't let what's happening happen. It's called Dominate the Streets. I hope that you also use our National Guard. Call me. We'll be ready for them so fast their heads will spin. 
Washington, D.C. has painted the giant words Black Lives Matter on the road to the White House. It spans two blocks of 16th Street with each of the 16 bold yellow letters spanning the width of the two-lane street. The mayor has officially deemed that section Black Lives Matter Plaza. The mural project comes ahead of a planned protest tomorrow where a large turnout is expected. We're continuing to bring you the latest on the protests happening throughout the state. We'll have more on the caravan protests in our later newscasts on our Facebook page and as always at Channel3000.com. Another sunny day heading into the weekend. Let's get a check on the forecast with Gary. We start out with some showers and thunderstorms and had clouds through the morning, but the sun came out this afternoon and you can see the skies clearing across southern Wisconsin as a cold front pushes to our south and to our east and that will actually uh, cause our, our humidity levels to drop. You can see on Doppler track, uh, no rain across Wisconsin right now and as we look at temperatures, they're still pretty warm. Kenosha's at 88, Madison 84, Janesville at 88, but to the north of West, temperatures are closer to 80. The dew point temperatures, though, middle 60s over southeastern Wisconsin, dropping to around 60 in Madison and already in the upper 50s north of Madison. So the heat index right now feels a little bit warmer to the south and east, but a little bit cooler to the north and west. By tomorrow morning, temperatures will drop into the upper 50s as skies become mostly clear. Tomorrow should be a sunny and pleasantly warm day with high temperature right around 78 degrees. We'll see a warm up on Monday, and then we have alert days in the forecast for Tuesday and Wednesday for the potential for some heavy rain. I'll have more details and weather in a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. Madison Fire investigators are still trying to determine what caused yesterday's fatal fire on the city's west side, but say the fire was not intentional. Crews were called to the home on Seminole Highway around 3 yesterday morning. Two people died and two others were injured after the house caught on fire. The names of those involved have not been released. Public Health of Madison and Dane County says it is increasing the amount of parishioners who can gather at church services in the county. Officials say churches can now have services of up to 25% capacity. Previous orders said only 50 could gather per service. That change is being made in response to a letter from lawyers who are representing the Catholic Diocese of Madison. Bishop Donald Hying says the diocese has a social distancing plan in place for parishioners. Diocese is very prudent and careful about how we're reopening up masses, still actively discouraging elderly and at-risk populations from coming to mass yet. But again, our fundamental operation, our fundamental purpose and activity is Sunday Mass. So this allows us in Dane County to do what we've successfully done in the other 10 counties of the diocese. Dane County Executive Joe Parisi says they didn't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars on legal fees. He went on to say, quote, while the request of the Catholic Bishop of Madison raises a legal gray area, the public health science here is anything but unclear. COVID-19 is here, infecting more people every day, and minimizing contact in large group settings is an incredibly effective approach to staying healthy. Dane County remains in phase one of the forward Dane plan. Public health will not go into phase two until they see two full weeks of data from phase one. The earliest that could happen is this coming Tuesday. It's June 9th. The city of Madison also opened all outdoor basketball courts today. There have been 323 new positive cases of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. Wisconsin's total number of confirmed cases has reached 20,333. Seven more people have died due to complications from the virus, with Wisconsin death toll now at 634. About 66% of all positive cases have fully recovered. The positive percentage of new COVID-19 tests has dropped by more than one percentage point today. New data shows today's percentage of new test kits, uh, new tests sits at 2.9%. That's compared to the 4.1% seen yesterday. There are now more than 1.8 million confirmed coronavirus cases in the U.S and over 108,000 deaths. States around the country continue on the path of reopening, even as the numbers grow in some areas. Last week, 24 states reported increases in their average new COVID-19 cases compared to two weeks earlier. On Thursday, that number fell to 17 states. U.S. unemployment rate fell to 13.3% in May. Two and a half million jobs were added. A surprisingly positive reading in the midst of the recession that has paralyzed the economy and depressed the job market in the wake of the pandemic. In Wisconsin, more than 601,000 people have filed for unemployment since mid-March. Ahead on News 3 Now at 5, the pride flag going up at the Capitol, the latest from downtown. And coming up tonight at 6, vandalism weighing heavily on veterans. After the downtown museum was tagged, we'll have more on that impact at 6. And on Wall Street, those strong gains to close the week were triggered by the surprisingly high job numbers. The Dow up 829 points, and the NASDAQ adds almost 200, while the S&P 500 gains more than 81. We'll be right back. 
Staying in touch has never been more important. So U.S. Cellular has extended its plan to waive data overage charges by two more months. Now through July 31st, no matter what plan you're on, you'll have the smartphone data you need and not be charged for any overages. That way, you can work from home, check the latest headlines, and stay in touch with family and friends without worrying about your bill. So even if you have to be apart, you can stay in touch. U.S. Cellular. When you have depression, it can plunge you into deep, dark lows and can leave you feeling extremely sad and disinterested. Overwhelmed by bipolar depression? Ask about Vralar. Not all types of depression should be treated the same. Vralar effectively helps relieve all symptoms of bipolar depression with just one pill once a day. Elderly patients with dementia-related psychosis have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which may mean a life-threatening reaction, or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. Metabolic changes may occur. Nausea, restlessness, and movement dysfunction are common side effects. When bipolar depression overwhelms, ask how Vralar can help. So if we're going to spend a third of our lives sleeping, shouldn't we try to get the best sleep possible? That's why Denver Mattress is all about that sleep life. And during the epic summer sale, save 100 bucks on our Athletes' Choice lineup. Any size, any model. Check out the Queen Size Summit Firm, only $189.99. Or purchase a Tempur-Pedic and get a $300 Furniture Row gift certificate, plus five years no interest. And score free local delivery. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right mattress. We know you're worried about keeping your family healthy right now. We're all craving sunnier skies and warmer temperatures. But as we move into spring, you should know our first Horn weather team is preparing to keep your family safe during severe weather season. We're ready, armed with the latest first Horn technology and an experienced team of meteorologists. So focus on your family. Your first Horn team has the weather covered on air, online, and on your phone. Trust the weather leaders. The first Horn weather team on News 3 Now and Channel 3000. Tonight at 6, Madison protesters are back out today. We'll be live during their car caravan calling for dramatic change to our policing system and vandalism weighing heavily on veterans after the downtown museum was tagged. The story at 6. News 3 Now is partnering with the Madison School District to provide its high school seniors with special commencement ceremonies. Class of 2020, born to make history. June 12th and 13th on News 3 Now and streamed live on Channel 3000. Welcome back. State Capitol showing support for Pride Month. Governor Tony Evers has ordered the rainbow pride flag to be flown over the east wing of the state capitol building starting today and ending at sunset on June 30th. Jimmy Catalano is a student at UW-Madison and he says the country needs unity right now. It definitely is a big statement and it kind of shows support and I think right now Everyone kind of needs to be a little bit more unified across the board, and I think just something like this, showing that support and kind of having that as a symbol is really important because just now more than ever, we kind of need more unity in our lives. The order also authorizes state buildings and any jurisdiction within the state of Wisconsin to fly the rainbow pride flag this month. A storm that appears to be heading for the U.S. Gulf Coast has regained tropical storm force while drenching southern Mexico and Central America. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said tropical storm Cristobal had maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour, could be near hurricane strength as it approaches Louisiana on Sunday. Tropical storm and storm surge warnings have been issued for the central U.S. Gulf Coast. Let's get a look at our first Warren weather. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Well, we've got nice weather on the way for the weekend. Skies will be uh, sunny to partly sunny, and the humidity levels will be down. But the remnants from Cristobal bear watching, and we have put alert days in the forecast for that potential for Tuesday and Wednesday. As showers and thunderstorms will develop ahead of a cold front on Tuesday, right at the same time, the surge of moisture from Cristobal works its way into the Midwest, and that could bring some locally heavy rain, maybe even the possibility for some severe thunderstorms on Tuesday afternoon, depending on 
understand how much instability there is, but there certainly will be a heavy rain threat Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, and possibly into Wednesday morning before the showers and thunderstorms end on Wednesday. And the two-day rain totals could be somewhere in the one to three inch range. A couple of the future track uh, forecast models show the potential for about a three to four inch rainfall, mainly over western Wisconsin and parts of eastern Iowa and southeastern Minnesota. But the other computer model has the axis of heavier rain closer toward Madison with a one to three inch swath through there. Again, it's hard to pick exactly where these uh, swaths of heavier rain will be, but the potential is high enough that we did have to put alert days in the forecast for the potential for heavy rain. The humidity levels are starting to drop and that's pretty much taking care of the precipitation across Wisconsin. We had some showers and thunderstorms this morning, but now we have a pleasant uh, trend for Saturday and for Sunday with high temperatures in the upper 70s. We start to warm, on, uh, warm up on Monday. We're back to the upper 80s as winds pick up out of the south and then rain and thunderstorms from Tuesday, especially Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday night ending on Wednesday. On weather track, you can see things pretty quiet around here. The temperatures are warm, but we're not getting a wind flow out of Canada, so that doesn't cool us off. All it's done is really push the humidity down to the south, and that's where most of the uh, thunderstorm activity will be today. There's Cristobal just coming off of the uh, Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, starting to get back in the Gulf of Mexico, becoming a little better organized. You can see the center of circulation here with more of the thunderstorms to the north and east of the, uh, the center. That's a sign that things are starting to get a little more active uh, with that system and could become near hurricane strength before it, it uh, makes landfall probably in Louisiana on Sunday. Weather track right now across the Midwest. Things are pretty quiet now. The first cold front has come through. A second front to our north and west dries out the air a little bit more and allows temperatures to drop off, uh, especially later on tonight. So right now, temperatures are still in the 80s here. Behind the second front, they drop into the upper 70s. That's what we'll be looking at for this weekend. And notice how the dew point temperatures, 70s to our south, 60 here in Madison, 40s to our north and west. The air noticeably drier, and that'll be in here for the weekend. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, pleasantly mild, high temperature at 78 degrees, and the 7 to 10 day forecast, nice day on Sunday. Could be a slight chance for a shower Saturday night north of Madison. Otherwise, look for warmer weather on Monday, showers and thunderstorms Tuesday and Wednesday with the potential for some heavier rain. Still looking at dry weather and a comfortable trend at the end of next week before we warm up and see another chance for a shower or thunderstorm toward the following week. As we take a look at the uh, at first warrant traffic right now, here's the DOT camera, I-3990 at uh, County Highway AB. Traffic moving pretty steadily in both directions. Gorham Street is closed uh, through uh, the Isthmus right now because of uh, the activity there with the protest, but otherwise, Beltline right now, pretty good shape in both directions. Uh, not seeing any travel delays there. About a 14 to 15 minute trip between University Avenue and I-3990. Heading out of Madison, we've got a 24 minute commute on the I-3990 from the Beltline south through to Janesville. It's 16 minutes out to Sauk City on US-12 and 14 minutes to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue and US-151. That's your News 3 Now, first warn traffic. All right, Gary, thank you. And ahead on News 3 Now and five NFL players demanding action action from the league when it comes to social justice, what they're asking. That's ahead at 5. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Buildco season is here, and the signs are all around us. Like free installation on all windows, siding, and doors, and no interest for one year. It's time to jump on that home renovation project and free installation all from the comfort of home. That gives you time to make the most of your Feltco season. Free installation ends soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for feltco Hi, I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. And if you haven't tried Plexiderm, we've created the best offer yet with our Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge. All it takes is 10 minutes to reduce the appearance of under-eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. Even the 11 lines between your eyes are visibly gone in minutes. Plexiderm works so well, makeup artists, celebrities in Hollywood, and even people across the country just like you look and feel years younger in minutes. 
So I've had under eye bags for a very long time and it sucks. I have spent so much money on tons of eye creams, eye gels. Finally, I tried something called Plexiderm. And I'm not joking, it works. When I do a collage and everything is done, it looks amazing. That is exactly how Plexiderm makes me feel. I put it on my face and somehow, some way, I look together, which is amazing. I'm Jackie and I took the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge and so should you. I'm Neela. I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. And yet, when you look in the mirror, what you see necessarily isn't what you feel inside. Plexiderm, seriously, I look 20 years younger than I did before. And that's so super important because my whole life is about health, fitness, feeling good and looking good. And first chance I really got to look how I feel inside. Honest to God, it's amazing. There's nothing there. Like, the bags are gone. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shell rock. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing the appearance of under eye bags and wrinkles in minutes. So if under eye bags and wrinkles make you look tired and older, take action with the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge. Try it today for only $14.95 plus get free shipping. Visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection remains open to serve our customers and communities during these times of uncertainty. We've got you covered for all your plumbing service needs. Call us for help. We are here for you. We expect protests to continue this weekend and will bring you the latest messages from activists here in Madison and across the country. We're also continuing to track Wisconsin's path to reopening amid the pandemic. We'll see you Saturday morning at 5 and 8. Right now, a portion of downtown Madison remains closed due to another round of protests. People are coming together to eat and listen to music during this gathering. Organizers are calling it a celebration of life, as today would have been the 27th birthday of Breonna Taylor, the Kentucky woman who was killed by police earlier this year. Some of the NFL's most prominent black players have released a video with a powerful message calling on the league to condemn racism. On behalf of the National Football League, this is what we, the players, would like to hear you state. We, we the National, National Football, Football League, League, condemn racism and the systematic oppression of black people. We, we the National, National Football League, League, admit wrong and silencing our players from peacefully protesting. We, we the National, National Football, Football League, League, believe black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black, black lives, lives matter. matter. Black lives matter. Well, Patrick Mahomes, Odell, OBJ, others all in there. The league did release a lengthy post on social media saying in part that it stands with the black community because black lives matter. Stay with us. Final check of your first warrant forecast. Just a moment. Appliance Mart's sale of the summer deals are hot. Save up to half off all appliances, including clearance items and scratch and dents, plus 18 months special financing and free shipping. Summer starts now at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley Home Store off the Beltline. Fry Construction is having a sale they've never done before for times we've never seen before, making it the perfect time for home repairs and improvements with exclusive offers to save you money on roofing, siding, windows, gutters, and design services, all with zero down, zero percent interest, and no monthly payments for six months, plus free virtual consultations from the comfort and safety of your own home, or we will come see you following strict safety protocols. Visit FryConstruction.com for exclusive money-saving offers and contact us today. Sometimes distance isn't the only barrier between you, your friends, and your loved ones, which is why TDS works tirelessly to provide you with the fastest, most reliable internet so you can stay strong, stay connected, and keep your world together. TDS, the best internet for how we live. Lately, we found new ways to support and care for each other. And while every gesture counts, so too does every dollar. That's why American Family Insurance is returning $425 million to our customers. This includes a 10% savings for all current and new auto customers for the rest of the year. 
We hope this does your world some good and reminds you that supporting your dreams means the world to us. Contact your agent or go to AmFam.com to learn about more ways to save. Here's to all the farm and fleet dads, the ones who get the job done right, the ones who work hard and take pride in what they do, the ones who take the time to pass it on. Show your appreciation this Father's Day with a gift you know he'll love from his favorite store, Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Like this Milwaukee drill driver kit, only $159. Half off this screwdriver set with rack, $16.99. And for dad's best friend, save $3 on Purina Pro Plan dog food. Plus, a Blaine's Farm and Fleet gift card is always the perfect gift. When America needed us to build, we built. Masks, ventilators, shields. When frontliners needed support, Ford dealers answered. And now we're open and ready to serve you. With exciting special offers and deals across the Ford lineup. Stop by a Ford dealership or go online. We've made it safer to shop, easier to buy. Now get 0% financing for 84 months on a 2019 built Ford Tough F-150. Only at your local Ford dealer dreams come true. The Mattress Marathon is back at Ashley Home Store's sale of the summer. Pay as little as $1 a day with five years no interest on Tempur-Pedic, plus up to six months of payments on us with the Ashley Cares program. Find sizzling queen door busters starting at just 95 bucks. Ashley Home Store. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, eight cities have made changes to police policy since the death of George Floyd, and that includes the city where it happened. Minneapolis, one of the big changes, what happens to officers if they don't intervene when excessive force is used. Plus, new job numbers today send the stock market soaring, but it's not all good news. Unemployment is still on the rise among minorities. And Steve Hartman goes on the road, reflecting on the week that was and the moments of humanity we might not have noticed. That's all tonight on the CBS Evening News. And Gary's here with the final check of the weekend forecast. Well, the air is starting to dry out. You can see that from the Quimby Radio Sky Cam at Platteville. Skies are almost perfectly sunny there. Most of the clouds now well off to the south and east. Things very quiet across Wisconsin. They should stay that way for the weekend. Temperatures are warm. Uh, 84 in Madison, 88 in Janesville, but to the north and west, a couple degrees cooler. 80 right now in the Dells and Viroqua. But notice the dew point temperatures. Mid-60s over southeastern Wisconsin, around 60 in Madison. The Dells already down to 54 degrees. So the air is drying out that will get, allow low temperatures to drop into the upper 50s tonight high temperature tomorrow 78 under sunny skies sunday looking nice as well monday will warm up then we have the alert days for heavy rain chances tuesday and wednesday with showers and thunderstorms and then a period of dry weather after that with highs in the 70s for the rest of next week all right gary thank you thanks for joining us we're back in 30 minutes for news three now at six stay tuned now for the cbs evening news